Hey, what's up you guys? Century Productions here, and we're doing a little bit of uh, articulated comic book art. We're doing a little bit of ACBA, a little bit of toy photography, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, yeah, we got this super dope uh, Iron Man uh, armory setup with a cutout. This is not a picture, this is real life. This is a cutout. Those are real action figures, except maybe that Ultimate Iron Man. That might actually might be a knockoff. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. But yeah, uh, welcome to this new video series. I'm calling The Watchtower. It's called The Watchtower because in the comics, Sentry's home base is called The Watchtower. And I don't know, it just it made sense to me, I guess, kind of. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. It just sounded cool. So that's why it's called The Watchtower. I will try to never mention that again. So anyways, uh, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Boog Nice. If it wasn't for his main course, Mean Time In Between Time videos, I don't think I would have been working on this series. This series kind of covers a lot of the stuff that Boog covers in his uh, main course videos, which is, you know, quick reviews, uh, action figure photography, uh, toy hunting, he does uh, community stuff, he opens up packages, pickups, hauls, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I thought to myself, I was like, I really like this format, and I think I could do something like that. You know, I take so many uh, shots nowadays as far as the ACBA setups that, you know, it just made sense. Why not just talk a little bit at the end of each shot on my camera and see how it goes, throw it out into the world and see if you guys dig the style or dig what I'm talking about. And maybe you guys might learn a thing or two along the way. I'm not sure. I, I, I personally don't think I'm a professional toy photographer in any means. I just know that I really enjoy doing it. And I do know a decent amount about it, so I think I could actually, if it's something that you guys wanted to jump into and, and learn more about, maybe you take pictures casually and maybe you got some dioramas and stuff like that, maybe it's something that you could look into and maybe get a little bit better at. So, I don't know, just throwing it out there and see if you guys are, are digging it. So, uh, yeah, so once again, huge shout out to Book Nice. Uh, I've known Book for years now, uh, solid guy. You guys should really go back and watch all of his main course videos. They are excellent. It's become one of my favorite things to watch on YouTube, hands down. I like throwing them on when I'm taking a shot, and it's just it's just good, not just background audio, but you're also learning stuff while you're 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 actually practicing it. So I think it's a, a really good mixture that you know gets you inspired and, and gets you off your ass. So yeah, let's talk about this Iron Man shot. We're gonna talk about all kinds of shots in, in this video and maybe a couple other things. Uh, and in future videos, I hope to show you guys some stuff as far as the cutout stuff like this. Um, this is just a, a, a picture pr printed out on regular printer paper and it's glued to construction paper to make it a little bit more stable. And you can kind of, you know, mix it into pictures and see if you can get a good mix of actual action figures to actual comic source material and see if it looks dope. I think this looks super dope in front of me. I'm my own biggest fan so I always get really um, stoked on my own stuff. So uh, It's pretty cool. We've got the Disney Toy Box Hall of Armor set behind this cutout here. Uh, they're made for like little kids toys but they actually work really well with the six inch Iron Man figures and they you know they kinda got that Iron Man kind of feel to them and they're actually mix and matchable you can like pick them up and make different designs and stuff like that I have three sets here they each come with the five little uh, quadrants or whatever you want to call them I don't know I, don't know. <laughs> I ain't uh, Tony Stark so I don't know what they're called well I wanted to kind of show you guys the setup before I started breaking everything down well not breaking it down you know taking it down I don't just take all my displays and start throwing them at the walls and breaking shit that's not what I meant but anyways uh, you can see that I have a few lights not really too many lights actually uh, you know the sayings as old as time but the, the more you do this the better at it you get and you realize how to set up your lights and where you need to set up your lights and you know play around with it as you're taking the picture so you start uh, you know figuring it out what you need to do and how to get the job done so yeah we got rim lighting we got lights on the actual back of the Hall of Armor there, and then we also have another light on the cutout here. You gotta have a you know, light source on both of those. And sometimes it can be a little hard, you know, getting the, the right depth and, and all that, but it's, it's something you gotta just practice at. And 
you know, have fun doing it too. Uh, you might see a couple things around here before I show you the finished picture. Uh, you'll see my beautiful action figure collection over here in the IKEA Detolves. Uh, and it's looking uh, pretty good. We've got the Sentinel down there uh, locked away in the corner. He has been a bad mutant hunting robot, so he is trapped in there for right now. You might also see that there is a giant man picture on my wall. And yes, every morning uh, I get on my knees and I pray to the Hasbro gods that we will get a HasLab giant man. And uh, I think my prayers are going to be answered soon, I hope. Uh, also over here, you might see I have a Yu-Gi-Oh! 10. Um, I do not did it did, did, did duel anymore, but uh, it is actually a really helpful tool, believe it or not. It's heavy. It's uh, I use it a lot to prop things up on it and, or weigh something down. So it's a pretty cool uh, little tin. Uh, but don't worry, I have my Blue Eyes White Dragon uh, in a card protector case. So he is safe. Anyways, let's take a look at the finished picture. All right, well, huge shout out to Shardimus. He gave me the UPC and I was able to find my Renew Your Vows pack. Super stoked on this new uh, Spider-Man, new toe articulation. Um, just really happy. This is also the first time I'm seeing the new packaging, which, uh, it's interesting. Uh, hopefully I don't open this shit up and there's not like a Baron Mordo or something in there. But yeah, super stoked I got this. I actually got two, picked one up for a friend. So yeah, let's uh, pop this bad boy open and see what he's all about. All right, so I got the set opened up. I was playing around with it for a little bit. I'm really happy with this set. I think it's uh, an amazing set. Uh, if you guys are wondering what this area is, this is like probably the main area I play with my toys, do my cutouts, cut the cutouts. Um, pose my figures for shots. This is just like my general area. All this black stuff on the ground here is uh, me edging my cutouts with a Sharpie. So um, just ignore all that. This is probably gonna be where I'm gonna be kind of going over some figures, showing cutouts, stuff like that. Still trying to figure out the process a little bit for this, uh, these types of videos, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So back to these uh, figures, these figures are phenomenal. Uh, the spinneret, I want to just touch on real quickly about her. I think she's just fantastic. Pinless technology, three sets of hands, alternate Mary Jane head. I think it's just a really great figure. And um, I really love the, the double jump jointed elbows, uh, the pinless, uh, especially at this little area at the knees right there. I love not seeing the pins right there and on the elbows, of course, too. So that is a great figure. Uh, the Spider-Man. I have one tiny little gripe with this Spider-Man, but overall, I think this is probably gonna be our new definitive uh, Spider-Man. Just for comparison's sake, I, I pulled out the uh, uh, retro version, uh, which I think for a long time was the best Spider-Man. Uh, this new Spider-Man has a darker blue uh, as opposed to that lighter blue on the retro version, uh, and it's completely pinless. And on top of that, I think the best new part about this figure is the toe articulation, which is great, which is also pinless. Uh, I, I really am loving this figure. Now the one minor gripe I have with it, but you see that little gap? I've seen this a couple times on figures. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but it's where the peg kind of fits into the bicep there. And it just leaves this little gap. Now their reviews, their figures didn't show any gap whatsoever, but I am kind of seeing a slight gap on his right side, but I'm seeing a pretty major gap on his uh, left side, which when you're posing the figure around and you're like moving his bicep up, it kind of like strains the joint a little bit, which is a little scary. Um, I'm afraid, I'm not afraid that it's gonna snap. I'm more afraid that it's just gonna pop out and then I'm just gonna be dealing with this loose joint for the rest of my life. So that is slightly annoying, but uh, I've been playing around with this figure for probably about an hour now and I haven't really had any issues. Uh, with this just yet and I even took a hair dryer and tried softening it up and seeing if I could push it in a little bit more but that didn't really seem to help but other than that I think this is the the new best spider-man for sure really happy with it three sets of hands alternate head that looks like it has more detail on that Peter Parker head which is really nice I could probably show you guys this real quick uh my camera will pick it up pretty nice I like it um, yeah, this is a, a great little set, man. You know, the, the new price is a little steep, but um, I think for 
the new definitive Spider-Man I think it's worth shelling out for. So yeah, that's my little quick rundown, first look kind of deal with this two pack, really happy with it. Um, I still think this is a great figure, but those pins are, are definitely, definitely an eyesore. And now that we can get something like this, I think, uh, I think everybody will be a little bit more happy with the set. So yeah, definitely pick this up. I don't know if, I can't remember if this is a Target exclusive or not, but I found it at Target. It wasn't even on the shelf. I had to ask the guy to go in the back and, and just pray that he wasn't back there on his phone being like, oh, I'm just gonna wait a little bit and then tell this guy he didn't find anything. He actually found it for me, so cool dude. So yeah, great set. All right, so I put them in a little setup here, just something quick I kind of threw together. I didn't really have any idea of what I was gonna shoot for these guys, but I had this water tower just uh, laying around. I, I found it at Hobby Lobby uh, months back and basically it like holds stuff, but you know, it works pretty well for 1 12th uh, photography, so. I figured I'd have them kind of like crawling on it. The only thing that kind of sucks is this little thing right here that is, you know, the hinge for it opening. So that's kind of like an eyesore for me, but you know, you can sometimes get away with stuff like that. The other side has like actual lock, so that, that side wouldn't really work. As you can tell, I got this piece of paper just kind of on the wall back there. It's blowing around in the wind. I got my fan on, uh, but a nice little shot. You know, you use a little nice background get a nice blur on it. Um, you got both of these figures uh, actually tacked on the top there. So they have tack on the back of her thigh and he's got tack on the bottom of both of his feet, which allow them to actually stick to the top of that water tower. But I, I really like how this one came, came out. Uh, if you see the frame right now, obviously I'll be cropping that. So you'll only see, you know, up until the edge, like right here, and I'll crop the bottom. So you'll only see that city background. You won't see the the wall back there but yeah nice little setup that uh, I threw together I think it came out pretty cool I'll kind of show you guys how I have my light set up here now all right so we got the setup now uh, you can see I've got uh, quite a few different lights I have a couple of the these bigger ones that are over right here those ones are angled at the actual background to light that up I'm talking about the piece of paper back there uh, you know it's important to light up your backgrounds because if you don't light them up then they're just gonna be all shadowy and dark. And you know, you really wanna have a good sense of lighting, especially when it's a daytime shot. Uh, I have these two smaller ones right here and here, uh, pointing to the backs of the figures to give them kind of a, like little nice back lighting, but it's really subtle. It's nothing really crazy. I don't wanna go over the top with that. I have this really big panel uh, one right here. It provides a, a decent amount of light that covers a good amount of area. So. I like using that a lot. And then of course you can see my camera view here. Once again, this will all be cropped. Of course, I've got that light up top right here. That's giving them a nice rim lighting. You wanna always light the top of their heads. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of lights, but it's actually a pretty quick setup, um, especially when you've been doing this a while. And like I said, I want a good background blur on that city. I don't want it too much in focus because then you'll kind of see it's a little cartoony and. You know, it may not blend just right. So I think my settings for this are the shutters one over 125 and then the F stops at 5.6, which is usually like the range I like to play with as far as my F stop. I'll, I'll kind of be going through the camera settings more and more um, as we, we do more setups and everything like that. It's always good to just pull out the camera, play around, play around with the different settings, different white balances, all that stuff. Uh, you may also notice that, you know, there's a lot of light that are being shown on the figures, but I have my actual room light off because the only light that I want, you know, uh, touching the figures is the, the lights that I provide. Uh, you know, I'm talking about all these lights right here. So you never want to keep your bedroom light or whatever room you're in's light on to, uh, you know, help light that scene. It's just never really worked for me. Uh, you know, so that's why I have all these different lights. Each of these these lights usually have their own, uh, you know, specific job that I use them for, uh, specifically this top one right here that's lighting the top of them. That's usually what I use for rim lighting. I, I love that light. You know, w once you start getting into action figure photography, you start playing around with different lights and, and all kinds of different setups and everything. And you, you slowly start to find out what works best, what each light's job should be. And, um, yeah, I think this one is, is you know, it's a very simple shot. It's nothing crazy, no game changers. 
a game changing shot. It's just a fun little shot to highlight both of these figures. And uh, I also kind of wanted to throw in that pose just for the uh, Spidey because I really wanted to show off that toe articulation. Um, so hopefully that shows off in the, the full picture. So yeah, let's check, take a look at the, the finished product. All right, guys, we've got a, another new figure that came in. It's the, the new 20th uh, Toy Biz Anniversary Toad figure. You know, I never had the original Toad from Series 1, which I think was, what, like 2002? Oh, yeah, 20 years. Yeah, I'm an idiot because this is the 20, 20 years anniversary uh, special packaging. And I love this packaging, honestly, dude. This packaging is so dope. It's got that retro uh, Marvel Legends logo right there. Uh, super reminiscent of when I really started getting into collecting toys so um, I definitely got to get two of the I have a duplicate of the Hulk and a duplicate of the the Captain America but I got to get another one of the Iron Man and I definitely want two of these because you know I'm not really a super big like inbox collector but th these ones I definitely make an exception for so definitely want this whole set in box so I can display it on my wall and look at it whenever I get the chance. Uh, I'm super excited about this figure because I think he's gonna pair greatly with the Frogman uh, figure, which is my claim to fame as far as ACBA. I've, I think I've taken more Frogman pictures than anybody. So naturally, if you have a hero in your story, Frogman, you need the villain right here. So Toad will be Frogman's arch enemy, villain, madman, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I'm going to open this up and I'll probably end up throwing this in a setup or something, figure something out with him and Frogman. So it looks like a cool figure. I'm ready to open it. All right. So we got a quick little setup I did here with uh, Frogman and the Toad. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this uh, turned out. This is kind of just a really dumb scene that I threw together that from another weird idea I had in my head. I figured Frogman was chasing the toad. He apprehended him, threw some handcuffs on him, and now he's reporting back to base that he has in fact caught the toad. And then the toad, as you can see, is using his long tongue to kind of wither its way down to the handcuffs and maybe undo the handcuffs and then get away and then um, another pursuit will be afoot. I don't know, I don't really know what's going on. I try to do my best with the storytelling and everything like that, but this was just kind of a fun, fun little shot that I threw together. Pretty simple, blue background, couple of those little fake bonsai trees that you can find on Amazon. Some little 112 accessories strewn about, little fake newspapers, trash bags, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, man, that toad, I gotta tell you, dude, that toad is like one of my new favorite figures of the year. The articulation on it is just fantastic. The uh, drop down hips, it has like the G.I. Joe classified or the Spider-Man retro drop down hips on it. Super poseable. I mean, it is just a fantastic body mold and articulation. I'm just super happy with that figure. Definitely gonna pick up a couple more of those. But yeah, this is just a fun little dumb idea I had that I figured I would just, you know, take a quick shot of. Pretty easy, overhead lights, two lights in the front. It's a pretty, uh, pretty little quick little shot and turned out pretty well. So I pulled out some of these uh, movie figures, which, you know, this is obviously MJ and I also have the Luke Cage. This is a, I think a GP slot custom hoodie on him. Um, I like to use these figures as background characters for a lot of my shots. They just kind of work really well. It's kind of hard to come across females that are just like moderately dressed, I guess, in normal clothes for like just random background characters. MJ works really good with that. And what I noticed is a lot of them have like these little serial numbers on the back. Now you can tell here that this was a white serial number that I went over with the blue Sharpie like that would hide it at all. But you can see it's poking through there quite a lot. So I recently picked up this Dremel for like, I think it was like 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, it's just like a nice little tool to have. I guess it's cool to like make holes and, and sand stuff. So 
I was just messing around. I was like, God damn, how do I get rid of the um, serial number off the back of her leg? And I actually just used this little sander and I was able to just kind of sand it off. You can kind of see right there where it was there. I was able to sand it off. And the cool thing about that is this plastic was actually the same colors as the, uh, the pants here. So it actually kind of blended in there just perfectly. Uh, and this was on like the lowest setting. So I figured, what the hell? Let's, uh, let's try this out and see how it looks on the Luke Cage and see if I can get that, uh, those little numbers off of there. Not a lot of figures come with the numbers. I've noticed a lot of the movie figures do though. So let's try this. I don't know how this is going to work for camera, but... Oh, look at that. Now, it's still noticeable, obviously, but it's a hell of a lot less noticeable than before. And obviously, that blue Sharpie didn't do shit. So, cool little... Nice little use of this Dremel that I didn't even... This isn't even really the purpose I bought it for. I really bought it just to have it in case I needed it and I guess it that worked out perfectly just a couple days after getting it all right hey hell of a lot better than the blue sharpie I don't even know what the fuck I was thinking about the blue sharpie now I'm not a customizer by any means of the word I've, I've done a couple of black washes and other very small nitpick things but other than that I usually have no clue what I'm doing here so I'm just kind of messing around hey look at that hey man that's not going to be bad at all that blue sharpie is actually kind of messing with me now because you can still see the blue sharpie and if I sand even more of it that'll come off and it seems like it is And the cool thing about this is it will be very subtle, I think. Usually these background characters are kind of blurred a little bit. So you do not they're not usually fully in focus. In some cases, depending on what kind of picture you're taking, they might be fully in focus. But I think for the most part, they're not. All right. Well, you guys get the idea. Um... That worked a lot better than I thought. I mean, obviously it's still pretty noticeable, but I think it's a lot better than those numbers showing up on the back there. So, I mean, if you really wanted to go even deeper into it, I'm, I'm sure you could sand it a little bit better than I have here and then uh, maybe get some a fresh painted uh, coat of paint on there. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but hey, nice. It works well if I got him facing back um, with his back towards the camera. It'll work out pretty well, so nice little, uh, nice little, is that even a mod? I don't even think that's a mod, just a little quick little fix for those numbers, so pretty cool, interesting. All right, so here we've got uh, a shitload of old Toy Biz figures, which are still very near and dear to my heart. The cool thing about collecting, especially when you're a hoarding piece of shit like myself, is that you can always go back and appreciate your older figures that you, you know, kind of forgot about as opposed to getting all your new figures. So I went through my bins and I have hundreds of these Toy Biz figures and I've just pulled out some of the ones that I thought were really cool that I hadn't picked up in, oh man, some of these I haven't picked up in like close to 10 years. So I thought it would be pretty cool to kind of just go through them really quickly and check out some of these cool old Toy Biz figures. And let's see if my Toy Biz knowledge is still up to par. Uh, let's see if I can still remember the series that most of these were from, which is kind of funny because all the new, there's so many new Hasbro figures out that I don't know if I'll, re I'll remember what waves those ones are from, but I was so into these figures back in the day that I have a feeling that I'll be able to name quite a few of the series that these were actually from. So let's, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, this Luke Cage, I'm actually really stoked on right now. I've actually already gone through these and, and picked them up and played with them and actually did wash a couple of them. There was so much dust on some of these that I kind of had to get in there with a new toothbrush and some dish soap, soap and, and scrub some of that dirt and stuff off of there. And they come out looking 
almost like brand new. Now there's a couple things missing on this loot cage. I think there was a chain that hanged down right here. But if I recall, I believe this one was from the Mojo Build-A-Figure uh, series. So I definitely wanna take a picture of this figure uh, relatively soon because I think it's a great figure. It's the classic costume from Hero for Hire. And uh, you know, I really wish that they would give us a Luke Cage and I have a feeling they will eventually give us a, a Luke Cage in this costume updated. Uh, you know, the Marvel Legends Hasbro releases of Luke Cage have just been kind of a little underwhelming. So I think it'd be really cool to get a updated Luke Cage. I think we got the Scott Lang Ant-Man here. This is from the Giant Man Wave, which is in my opinion, the best Toy Biz, uh, uh, build a figure wave of all time. It's just, it, that giant man is just amazing. Still think it holds up. Still think it's one of the best build a figures, if not the best build a figure of all time. And it was released, what, 14 years ago, 16 years ago, something like that. So Scott Lang, Ant-Man, really cool. Love this figure, great figure. This angel, man, I wanna say this is from, oh man, uh, Sentinel series. I believe this is from the Sentinel Build-A-Figure Wave, if I recall. This one also had a blue variant, if I remember correctly. And it's still a pretty good figure. Uh, he's got a paint smudge right on the tip of his nose, so this figure is pretty much unusable at this point, unless I was to go in there and paint that a little bit, which I have no previous knowledge of or experience doing. So. Definitely, definitely need an updated regular angel. These wings though, I mean, these wings are amazing, dude. Look at these, this, this is just a fantastic figure, man. I really, really love this figure still. Uh, maybe I can squeeze this into my X-Men display. I'm not really sure. And boom, just like that, we got our little scene created. Uh, we're working with the TV. Lots of cool little things going on here. Dirty ass sidewalk. Uh, some background figures, which were the ones that I worked on earlier. So as you can see, these are the ones I used for this uh, this shot. And uh, the background, not the not the brick wall to the right here, uh, not not this, but the background is a TV screen, which comes in handy from time to time. I haven't used a TV screen in quite a long time, but the cool thing about it is you can switch it up, use different backgrounds for your pictures. Uh, it's really versatile, so I, I, I like using it every so often. I'm gonna try to use it more and more, but when I do use it, I kind of sacrifice a little bit of space on my display. You guys, just kind of get an idea. I've got a light here. I've got a light here. We've got that rim light that's going on up above, which provides a, a decent amount of light for the whole area. When you're working with the TV, you also want to try to find something that kind of blends with the environment that you're going with. So I was going for 1970s Harlem. I think that picture is actually Harlem. It's a modern picture, but hey, it works. I had a couple different pictures that I used for this, a couple different variations. But uh, yeah, man, this turned out really cool. It's, it's always nice to use the modern techniques on these older toys really make them uh, stand out and shine. So you can see I also put the camera at a little bit of an angle, make it a little bit more dynamic. But yeah, this kind of just came together, worked out, lots of just little background uh, objects. And you know, 1970s New York was, uh, was a little bit dirtier than it is now as far as uh, the cleanliness and and um, you know all the trash and everything. Or I've never been to New York, so maybe maybe it hasn't changed. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but hey, this worked out. I'm really happy with how, the, uh, how this looks. Uh, it's kind of funny that that other background character is, is a Luke Cage as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I just uh, thanks thanks you guys for for watching. I hope uh, you guys found it interesting. Please let me know below if you got any questions about anything you saw in this video, or if you got and maybe any ideas of what you would like to see in this series. I'm kind of open to everything right now. I don't really know exactly how I'm gonna continue with with this series, exactly what I'm gonna do, if it's just gonna be focusing on the pictures or some of the other stuff you saw in this video, but uh, I just I really appreciate you guys stopping by, uh, checking everything out. You know, like everyone says, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, you know, email it, uh, send a letter, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, comment below if you guys got uh, any questions or I don't know, if you wanna just say what's up, uh, I'll be checking them out, I'll try to respond as, as to the best of my ability if, with any questions and I really appreciate you guys checking this out and I, I'm, I had a lot of fun filming all this stuff so it was really cool and interesting and 
uh, yeah, I definitely want to do it again. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, let's take a look at the, the finished pick.